Welcome back, Mr. Goodberry. The first Star Logistics Studio is fully equipped and ready to record. Welcome back to Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. In episode 67, the Bengals have made moves. Yes, some of you corrected us in the comments that said, well, Mixon wasn't released. At the time of recording, he was released. So we've got some new things to talk about before we get to a film review, which will focus mostly on Geno Stone today. Because I think as of now, that's still the big, Bengals' biggest signing. But since then, they have agreed to trade Joe Mixon for a seventh-round pick uh, from the Houston Texans. I think he'll be a good fit there. It's good to see. I don't know why if trade feels better than a release. You know, it doesn't have to be. I think when a release is always or usually negative, a trade doesn't have to be, right? It can just be, hey, you get to keep your money and you get to go to a good situation and offense where you should fit pretty well. And we move on. And I, and I think that's good for both parties. Uh, since then, the Bengals have signed tight end Mike Gusecki, former Penn State athletic freak, went to the Dolphins. Uh, was solid for them, good to good, until Mike McDaniel got there and couldn't figure out a way to consistently use him. He went to the Patriots last year after the Bengals had some rumored interest. And with the Patriots, he really didn't do much. Still showed that he can be healthy and play a full season. Uh, but I think at this point, we're looking at a guy that's mostly been a slot receiver, big slot receiver. He's not much of a blocker at all. He's not going to give you much after the catch. He is a vertical above the rim dunk on you Tyler Eifert type of guy which is great you know I think that alleviates some of the loss of Tyler Boyd in the slot when you get a guy like Gusecki but it does not eliminate the need for a tight end and a, and specifically a dual threat tight end if you can find one uh, with bringing back Drew Sample who is a strict blocker and then Mike Gusecki that's a strict receiver off the line guy it creates a need for you to still be versatile and dynamic with one player. And that's where I think they'll end up in the draft is looking for a tight end that can uh, develop into that role and be that guy maybe in a year. So we'll probably be on the lookout if it's not Brock Bowers round, round one, which we don't, you know, probably shouldn't expect rounds two, round three, round four for a tight end that can uh, do a bit of everything. In the meantime, it sounds like the Bengals have agreed to terms with Vaughn Bell to bring him back to safety that's going to have be a whole cascading effect. We probably won't have to watch film on Vaughn Bell, which is nice. We know who he is and what he can do, but where does he slot in there? Because Bengals are paying him league minimum, supposedly. I mean, we haven't gotten there yet as I'm recording this. We can just deduce that they are because of the contract he's still owed with the Panthers. Does that mean he's an immediate starter over Jordan Battle? Is he there to help Jordan Battle and Geno Stone and all the new safeties that they've added over the last two years now? Uh, learn Anarumo's scheme and help with communication and things like that? Is he more of a Mike Thomas role player where he's assisting these guys from behind the scenes? Or is he still a capable starter that's going to go and play along Geno, alongside Geno Stone? And even if that's not the case, what does that mean now officially? It pretty much secures, secures, <laughs> it pretty much secures that Dax Hill is going to corner as I fumble with my words there because there's not enough safety snaps anymore. If you're going to use Vaughn Bell even partially, well, then there's definitely not enough safety snaps. And I think they probably see Dex as a slot corner, cover tight ends like Trey Flowers, uh, back up at all corner positions and safety positions and just say, hey, and maybe in a year, if you look good at this slot position, you will take over from Mike Hilton because Mike Hilton's in the last year of his deal. Having said that, they deserve some fire and some heat for not handling the Jesse Bates departure correctly, not just from drafting a first round safety that hasn't worked out, but now you spent free agent dollars to get back uh, Vaughn Bell and obviously to sign Geno Stone. In other news, the biggest move maybe financially, yeah, it is for sure, is Sheldon Rankins from the Houston Texans. Bengals signed him to a two-year, $26 million deal. That's $13 million per year. we got to see the official number still as of now. You get a pass rusher with athletic upside, former first-round pick. Not very good against the run, even though the Texans' defense was good against the run last year. He is a three-tech, so he's not a reader replacement. 
You still need a nose tackle. You still still need a run defender in the middle of your defense. But he gives you pass rush. He gives you athleticism. Those are things the Bengals sorely lacked on the inside. I'm excited to watch his tape, especially because he played so well against the Bengals. Had three sacks in that game. Absolutely destroyed Alex Kappa. Not that that's a good thing, but it, it is fun to see because it's a guy we know. So it gives us a good idea of how uh, he looks and can perform. But speaking of playing well against the Bengals, that's where I'm leading into the film review today. Geno Stone at free safety against the Bengals, his highest graded game from PFF from week two. Let's dive in, see what he offers to this team. We've got Geno Stone here. And while we're talking safety, as I was recording, the deal with Von Bell was officially announced by the big media, and it will be league minimum as expected. So Geno Stone, before we go too far, is number 26 for the Baltimore Ravens. And you'll see him lined up at the free safety spot. A whole bunch for them. Kyle Hamilton being the other guy. You'll see Marcus Williams as well. But Hamilton a lot of times will end up down in the box or in the slot. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. We're watching the guy in the top right there. And we're just going through the film. We've seen this game. We've watched this game on the up opposite side. Uh, so we're just going to kind of let it roll. And if nothing happens where Geno Stone doesn't get involved, we're going to keep it moving like that and, and skip ahead five seconds. So if you're wondering what that is, and if you're new here, we'll get three angles. We'll get the side angle. We'll get the end zone angle from the offense's perspective. We'll get the end zone angle from the defense's perspective. I think Roquan Smith, was, was it Roquan or Patrick Queen? One of them was fined for that first play of the game for leading with his helmet, if I remember correctly. If you remember, this game was close all the way until the very end, which I don't want to spoil if you don't remember. So there's Geno Stone coming up to fill the run. Nothing really there to, to write home about. He, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't circle him for you guys. I don't know if you, you were with me on that. He's down on the right-hand side right over here. So as he comes up, the play is made before him. Not much to do there. He had a very, I think it was a 32 PFF grade for run defense. So... We're looking for a lot of run defense. This may not be, and, th and that wasn't just for this game. That's for the season. So now we're involved in a play right away, and we will get to talk about it. So we're in a cover three situation with Geno Stone right here. He's going to be the robber, which means he's going to creep up this way while the back half guy rotates, and you've got the deep zone over here. You've got your third of the field over here. And a lot of times for the Bengals, They'll find like double slants or something against this guy's hooking up underneath. And I think that's what it is here. Even though I did not look at what they were doing. We got Tyler Boyd in the slot and we're going to get Geno Stone right here. Obviously Geno Stone's right here and watch him as his eyes on the quarterback and a step up. And as he sees first slant, not there, it's got to be coming back to the second slant. And he, he triggers and fires his gun as fast as Joe Burrow does. We know how Joe Burrow is an, an elite processor. Uh, of the football and what's going on around him. He can get the ball out to where it needs to be, like a, a, a high-level point guard. Well, Geno Stone reacting just in sync with him, knowing where the ball is going, knowing where it should be going, and reacting and getting in there and making a nice hit. Good catch by the current free agent, Tyler Boyd, talking to the Steelers, Jets, and Chiefs. A good tackle by Geno Stone is up on our left-hand corner here as he goes inside and then comes down. Keeps the play to a minimum gain. One more time, just because it, it's going to give us three angles here. When I cut up the film for you guys, that's why I usually cut it up, because sometimes it can be not much there to watch. So we're back now. He is the true free safety here. Single high safety. Let's see if they keep it that way. The Ravens like to mix and match and change things up after the snap. So let's see here. It looks like he wants to move. Yes, they're going to a cover two situation. He's over top of Jamar Chase. And the ball goes to Irv Smith Jr. down the sideline. Was that the biggest play Irv made all year? He did have a touchdown, so maybe not. It's nothing for us to comment on Geno Stone with. We will keep it moving. Question for you guys. Can you tell when safeties are going to move post-snap, like just by on their body language and the way they're leaning and angling? Like they're definitely moving here. We're not going to a cover two. He's going to the middle of the field here. And we've got to run up the middle. Stone is not going to get involved in that play. We just want to focus on Geno Stone. We could watch the game in, in full. We're down to three minutes left in the in the quarter. 
So far, lining up in the same exact spot every time. They're showing two safeties. Is he moving? Doesn't. Yep, there we go. He's coming up. We got a screen. And nice play by Stone. Very nice play by Stone. He held this one really, really, really well. One of the things when I, when I asked earlier, can you tell if a guy's going to back out or come down or, or go to the middle of the field before the snap? Can you tell that? Because that's one of the things the Bengals struggled with last year. Their guys would start leaning, 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 and you're like, all right, now I know what they're going to do. Post-snap, I know what the rotation is going to be. You want to hold that for as long as possible, and even sometimes once the quarterback has the ball and then you go. If you're an athlete, you can hold it that another half second. Stone's not the fastest guy. He was super young coming out of Iowa, so that usually contributes to to, to maybe late development uh, in the NFL. So maybe he's a little bit faster than what he originally timed as. But you're going to see him here. He's going to come up, and we're going to have Kyle Hamilton rotate this way. Same situation where he hit the Tyler Boyd on the play earlier. And we've got a bubble screen to Jamar Chase. That's uh, Geno Stone plays very, very well up here. So let's watch how quickly he reacts. I mean, he is firing, right? He knows right away that we've got a linebacker here that's blitzing. And the linebacker here is buzzing over the top right here. So. That he, the linebacker here that's buzzing over is to, in order to get in this window right here in case you're running a slant with Jamar Chase or anything like that. But the Bengals have built-in answers for it where they're going to run a screen, and Geno Stone knows it. So he knows he needs to get in there, he needs to fill it, and he needs to be that second defender to help against this screen. And there he is. Higgins takes on the lone corner, and Stone makes a one-on-one -on -one tackle with Jamar Chase, which is something you do not see very often at all. He just doesn't get tackled right that often. Here he is right over top of Chase. So they knew the potential blitz was coming. That's always a dead giveaway. Well, not always, but very good chance it's a dead giveaway. Anytime you've got a guy lined up directly over a receiver, a safety like that, you have to assume, if you're Joe Burrow, that this guy's blitzing. That we're going to get him firing in and him replacing him. I don't know why I turned to red there. Sorry. Pink? Magenta? But Stone does a good job closing. And you see his angles, his path to the running back. It's not just straight line speed for the kids out there. You've got to be able to be an athlete, break down in space, and still close with speed. And this is when Burrow couldn't push off either. So normally I think he'd have a little bit more zip and get that thing to chase a little bit quicker. All right, third and nine. Let's see what the Ravens pull out. Geno Stone's still in the same exact spot, so I'm not going to circle him for you at top right. Do we have a rotation at safety at all? Looks like Hal Hamilton's peeking in. Nope, we're going with a cover two situation, sliding it all the way, and we had a deep guy potentially. So we broke this play down on Bengals on the brain. I remember it now. Because we've got these two out routes down here. So they're, all three receivers were bunched up here. The, I think it's Higgins is going to run deep, and then you're going to have a one-layer out route and second-layer out route. So you basically get a high-low and figure out who you can hit based on the coverage. So for Stone, specifically, as he's right here, he sees, I mean, like, there's nothing. I don't got to worry about anything going on down here. Maybe Irv Smith comes all the way down, but that's so late in the play. So he slides over. They do a good job of Hamilton saying, okay, let me get over top then, and then you replace in the middle of the field. Does that make sense? So as he gets here, they both see Higgins going deep. And now if it's me and if this was – Healthy Joe Burrow, look at that pocket. The pocket looks good. Let's launch this against two safeties. I mean, that's how T had that one big play against the Ravens before the 2021, right, where he caught it over both guys and hits the ground and still has it. You throw it up against two safeties. But Geno Stone does a good job getting over there. Kyle Hamilton tries to grab Higgins, too. Yeah, that should have been that should have been ripped. We need to get back to the deep balls when you get them, not check down to Travion Williams on third and nine. But, again, this was week two. Burrow wasn't himself. Watch Stone, top left, up here. Watch him rotate, 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 getting all the way over there. He knows he's got to get on his horse and run with Higgins. He's not even close. you got to throw that up. I'm right back where I was. <laughs> I probably said the same thing at the time. All right, one more eye on Geno Stone here. Yeah, he's looking for it, looking for it. Wasn't looking for the deep shot at any point. Okay, we're on the second quarter now. Is that Stone? It is. Gino Stone lined up directly again, guys, right? We said this before. He's right over top, but with another guy in the slot, hmm, 
not exactly sure what he's going to do here. Let's see. Does he slide inside? Yeah, it's completely zone coverage. It looked like he wanted to go to Jamar Chase here. You basically got a sit glance route by the Bengals where he's going to sit down, try and get the attention of this linebacker, and you're going to wrap him behind, and it should have a window to throw the ball right over the middle. As both safeties, I mean, it's just hard for them to get back to their spots and then collapse on Jamar Chase coming across the middle. It's just too big of a gap. So this should have been a uh, sizable completion if it wasn't knocked out. Let's watch it again. I know we're watching Stone, but I kind of want to see the play here. Oh, man, he was throwing it to... He was throwing at the void, wasn't he? I don't know. Maybe not. That angle right there, it's hard to say. It's hard to say where that was going. He's reading the linebacker, though. So if the, let's see the linebacker again. Zero to the left. Does he go? Yeah, he goes with Chase. So maybe he was going to Boyd. Good job by Roquan. All right, next play. Should be second down now. Going to the middle of the field. He's your free safety. And they see the one-on-one -on -one with Jamar Chase. And they take the shot. They're a little quick and a little early on this. Trying to hit just a back shoulder. Chase doesn't see it or, or feel it. We got the, maybe that's why it was incomplete. All right, nothing for Geno Stone there. He was the deep free safety. I'd like to see more communication from the Ravens, right? I, I, that is something I saw later in the year pointing and talking and like they haven't had to communicate at all these guys are locked in i'm not saying it is a bad thing and mixon rips off a run to the left side this is vintage mixon as higgins slants inside it pulls these guys inside so then as mixon bounces it out as long as he has the speed to hit it you get both of these dbs stuck and sucked inside and that's what happens here Stone isn't able to redirect quickly enough to make a play on Mixon. This is where you lose a little bit of athleticism, taking out a guy like Dax Hill versus Geno Stone. This is why he had a 32 grade against the run, probably. Getting sucked in a little bit too far. Let's see it from his angle. Yeah, see, that wide receiver, everyone looks like they're blocking one way, and Mixon just one foot in the ground and sticks it. Stone still in the exact same spot. I swear they move them more later in the year. Were they waiting for halftime to really mix it up? Run up the middle with Chase Brown, Geno Stone, and Jamar Chase get into it just a little bit here. Chase climbs up the block. Other than that, nothing for us to see on Geno Stone. We are not, I have to remind myself, we are not evaluating the Bengals players or scheme in this one. We've done this. We were here week two. Stone still in the exact same spot again. Two high safeties. And he comes over to help with the rest of the defense. Already had T. Higgins. Score is 10-7. Baltimore is up. I haven't thought about this game in a while. Could have been the difference in the Bengals making the playoffs and the Ravens getting the first seed. All right, so now we got a communication situation probably. Kyle Hamilton do a lot of the pointing. Looks vocal back there. All right, we got a single high situation with Geno Stone. Most of the receivers are to the right, so he's trying to gain ground that way to get to the middle. That's right. This is T hitting that little stop route on his. Man, what a nice route that is. For a big guy to be able to stop as quickly as he does. That's T Higgins. Another deep free safety rep for Geno Stone. Same spot again. They haven't mixed it up at all yet. And we've got to run. So let's see him come up. He gets involved, but kind of passively. Let's see it. 
from the top left now. That's Geno Stone. Okay, so he's he's mirroring with Mixon. I mean, I wouldn't say it's passive, but he knew he didn't have to get involved. There's enough guys up there. You fill in it if he needs to. That was T that bumped him. That's why. T with his go-go gadget arms. Second and five. Red zone. Or just outside. Run up the middle. Stone slowly gets in there. Not much to write home about. We will keep it rolling. Third and one now. Now we actually have to locate Geno Stone here. Remember this play. I don't see him. There's a chance he's not even out there. Oh, no, there he is, 26. So this looks like him right here on the edge. Taking on Drew Sample. Is that right? Yeah. Sample gets his block. We'll see the phys physicality. See if, so this right here, if you did not, Geno Stone's come up to play it right here. He and Sampler are going to engage as the run goes. Not near them, but worth noting here. Sample easily gets his block there. And the Bengals convert. First down. Down by three. Four and a half minutes to go. Geno Stone is back in his spot. It's the closest safety to us. They must be they must play it left and right. Nothing for us there. Second down. Stone back in his spot. It looks like he's coming forward. Yeah, he's sitting on that. There he is. Undercutting Higgins route, using his mentals here. Watch how he, he's gonna lean forward a bit, but his eyes are gonna go back and forth this way and then that way. Make sure he sees everything clearly. And we got this slant by Higgins over the middle. And he's going to jump right on it. He's going to undercut it too. Watch the way he almost trips up Higgins on this. Because he undercuts it so well. Top left side. Yeah. Good job by Geno Stone. That's how you be disruptive as five yards. Knowing where the guy's running and undercutting it, it forces the receiver to have to move. He's over top of Tyler Boyd here. Is he going to cover him? He was. We got a back shoulder fade to Jamar Chase while we basically bracket Tyler Boyd in the slot here with Geno Stone. As it looks like Boyd's going to try and go over the middle between the two safeties. But we got a fade going the whole way here, so it really doesn't matter. But keep your eye on Geno Stone over here and his coverage on Boyd. He was, again, right in there. I think you could have thrown that still, though. I mean, anytime you've got that much space, if you lob it to get it to the back of the end zone, I trust the receiver over a safety to get to this. But, again, he's just saying, I'm throwing this fade right away. Back shoulder. If I can stick it in there, and it really doesn't matter. All right, we should be at third down now. I don't got to play there. No, that was it. That was that was third down. Yeah, that's right. Third quarter. Limited reps for the Bengals. We've got a true free safety situation for Geno Stone. Can you see? Can you see he's going to end up being the free safety here? And there he is. This is what a true free safety situation looks like, where he is the lone deep guy, the deepest of the deepest. Flips his hips completely as Burrow makes a guy miss and circles back around the T. Higgins side as Burrow escapes the pocket towards that side of the field. I don't think there's much for us to see other than that. Stone in the same position again. Good cut by Mixon. Stone wrestling. Almost not a almost not even a factor in terms of the power there from Mixon. Good cut there. Yep. 
he fills it very quickly stone does and he's got to fill to the side first because roquan's not supposed to be pushed so far outside by volson but volson does a good job getting him out of there you would like a more physical tackle again that's not his strengths it's not the physicality it's not the run defense it's not the tackling his strengths are his ball skills awareness anticipation intelligence deep zone there he is again he's going to the deep free safety spot and we've got a throw to mix in wide open off of play action stone's got to get in there and take on t higgins and then i'm not sure how much contact he contact he gets on mixon mixon started this year off really well he had a good game versus the browns and then ravens and then the the rams week three right monday night football white tiger game that's right it's a fake to chase all right stone here coming down has to take take on higgins head on which he does which allows the other guy to get in and get a hit on Mixon, so Stone didn't actually get the tackle there. 13-10, Bengals down three in Baltimore territory. Geno Stone lined up as the true free safety this time pre-snap, which is maybe the first time we've gotten this. We'll see if it holds. We'll see if they try anything different. Again, second half is when the Ravens start to pull the strings on things. Okay, he's rotating all the way over to the right side here, and it looks like Marcus Williams dropped out so he would be this side safety he's this side safety Gino watching whoever that is running on that side it looks like we've got pressure right up the middle Burrow resets and checks it down to Drew Sample where did this come from where did this pressure come from ah Clowney beating Brown Jr. inside Stone back in a spot where he's been 90% of the game. Looks like it's going to be rotation. He's going to go to the free. Nope, to cover two. And a slant over the middle or an in route, in breaking route. Stone doesn't get involved. We'll keep it moving. Stone closest to us. He's up a little bit higher than Kyle Hamilton. Let's see if that changes. Nope, he is coming down. And he's got to come down and mix it in space. Oh, just gets a piece of him. I would say that's a missed tackle. Anytime you get, if the running back gets two plus yards after contact, I think that's a missed tackle. Now, some big backs, strong backs are going to eat this contact and stay on their feet. Oh, mixing it. He may have not got two yards. That might be a, that might be a push. He might have knocked him out and got his foot out of bounds, right? Let's watch Stone, bottom right side, where the NFL logo is on the screen. So he's just going to try and get a shoulder into the thigh pad. And then that step out right there is what the ref says. I don't remember. This might have been challenged, but got enough of them. Third and two now. And we're in tight. Geno Stone is following Irv Smith Jr. Do you remember this play already? Don't, don't lie to me. Do you remember this play already? Can he get over the top? Can he get there in time? Let's watch Stone. And he's following, following, following Irv. And now Irv's going again. They're trying to get Stone in traffic. Can't get over there in time. Just gets a hit. First down. Lots of communication assists from Kyle Hamilton there, who's an absolute stud. But Stone does just enough to stay with him. I mean, this Irv... Not a great year for the Bengals. Obviously, wasn't retained. Signed with the Chiefs, if you didn't see. These are some of his biggest plays of the year. He had that big one down the sideline on that first drive, and now he's getting this conversion on short yardage. Stone back to a spot. Left side. It's going to be a single high safety situation. Run goes for very little. Nothing for us there. We'll keep it moving. Have an extra time here. 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Bengals down by three at the 22-yard line. Stone, Geno Stone back in his spot. Not much disguising going on from the Ravens. And bang, there it is. So the pre-snap disguising, as right as it happens, they're showing 
a cover two situation. What they're showing is, Gino, you got this side. Hamilton, I believe that is. You've got this side. This is a, if you ever see MOF, middle of the field, and I'll put, and I'll say it's open. Any split safeties means at the middle of the field, if you want to attack here, you can with having both of these safeties vacating and going this way. Now, a lot of times teams will take this middle linebacker and try and fill it. But if your slot guy is faster than that linebacker, then you still throw this to the middle of the field. So they're showing this pre-snap, showing it to the Bengals. They really haven't mixed things up all game. Like I said this live, I forgot this was the play. But not mixing it up all game and really only a couple times, I think Burrow's thinking, okay, I've got middle of the field open here. I'm going to take this. So as he gets to this spot right here, what is, it still looks like both safeties are playing their respective outsides, and we're going to have T coming across into the middle of the field. But watch, you know, Stone. You see him here? He's already, his eyes are inside. He sees it. He's already going into the middle of the field. He's already switching it up and following Burrow's eyes. Did you see right here, like, as this guy gets flat-footed, this defender right here gets flat-footed, I think Burrow's thinking, oh, I'm wide open here. I've got this. And you've got the protection, too, to hit it. Watch it. Keep your eyes on Geno Stone. He gets to the spot, hits that back foot, and jumps in front. Huge interception where the Bengals are trying to take the lead. He could have gone even further. You should have stayed inside, Geno. All right, so let's see it from this angle. Eyes on Geno Stone, top left. I know it's hard not to look at the Bengals players and watch the Ravens players. Eyes the whole way. Burrow is not even coming off of it. This is what lack of practice reps will do. This is not normal for Burrow. Burrow is eyeing this the entire way. And Geno Stone is watching. He is watching him, and he sees what's going on. Yep, there it is. And so there's the window. You can see as Higgins is coming around. Window is going to be like right here, and Stone is just going to step in front, make a nice play on the ball. And are you telling me he couldn't have cut back right here? He couldn't have cut back? Kyle Hamilton, go and get this block on Karras? It's weird to kind of root for them to, to, to do this. like Because now he's a Bengals player. Oh, he laid that in there. It's a great play by Stone, honestly. Burrow never saw it. He doesn't think he should even be there. That's him reading the play, understanding. And now the Bengals are down by 10 in the third quarter. That play right there felt like it was later in the game. Why did I feel like that was fourth quarter? Do the Bengals not get a lot of possessions after this? Is that what's going on? All right, we got a new position for, for Geno Stone here. He is straight up in the box, covering the slot, I would assume here, which is T. Higgins. The ball doesn't go this way, but it at least gives us a little something else to look at. Good reaction time. Stays with it. Ball goes to the right. Stone at the deep, free safety spot. Single high. See if it sticks. Nice one-handed catch by Jamar Chase. Stone doesn't really get, he's not a physical hitter. We haven't seen that yet, right? I would say he's more of a wrap-up, let people gather it, finish the play rather than going and being the physical guy, which on a team that is was completely physical on defense for Baltimore. We'll see how that translates. Seven minutes left in the third. Third and three, Geno Stone, safety closest to us. They're showing like he's going to be the free safety. Let's see if that's going to be the case or they're going to take it out. Yep, he's the free safety here. And out route to Jamar Chase. Good read by Joe Burrow. He read that. You can see they were the way they were leaning, the way they were lined up. Stone closest to us. So when I said earlier, middle of the field closed, if there's a safety, a free safety in the middle of the field, that means middle of the field. Earlier, I said middle of the field closed if there's two safeties vacating and going to the boundaries. If there's a safety in the middle of the field, that's middle of the field closed, and you typically throw the boundary like that was right there. So 
quick processing by Burrow, sees it, and hits the play to Jamar Chase. Nothing to see for Stone there. Second and six now. Stone closest to us. It's nice I don't have to search for him too much. Third down and four now after that short run that went for very minimal. We've got, looks like Geno Stone's going to be the free safety here. Oh, we got a motion by Tyler Boyd. Let's see if they switch it up. And Stone now comes down to cover Boyd. That's what it looks like. So we got communication on both sides here. They're switching it up on offense. Raven switching it up on defense, or at least communicating and getting, make sure they're in line. We got a blitz and Stone is on Boyd. Boyd converts on third down that's why the ravens wanted hamilton who covers the slot more often on boyd i think here burrow sees it recognizes it and it's just too hard for stone to stay with i mean that's a that's a safety that almost gets his hand on that ball too boyd makes a nice possession catch for the first down You have to do it once in a while, right? Even when you take a large majority of your snaps as a free safety, you're still going to end up in the box in some situations. You're still going to end up in man coverage on the slot in some situations. It is unavoidable. Similar, we talked about this earlier. This is basically they're going to run the same routes with two guys here. First, Boyd's going to cut in and then... Higgins is going to cut in behind him. And if you either get the safety to jump on the first one or hesitate because he's like, oh, you're not, you know, you're not going to throw that first one. So I'm going to head back just a little bit. What's Higgins doing? Oh, too late now. I got to come in, which is what I think happens here. So keep an eye on Geno Stone as this route combo develops. See how he says, okay, you're not throwing it to Boyd. Well, let me back up. Oh, Higgins is running the same thing. Bang. Throw it into a nice tight window. The Bengals are on the move. This is a good throw by Joe Burrow. So watch Stone here as the first, if we can get it. Yeah. So as the first Boyd goes through, I mean, that window is wide open. You can throw this. But it's nice to have sometimes double slants, double posts, double ends here. Gives your quarterback a couple windows to throw through. That's a nice tight throw. All right, let's reset it. First down, four and a half, probably once this play is done. Minutes to go in the third quarter. Geno Stone is up closer this time. We'll see if he ends up being the robber or coming down. He is, he's one on one with Irv Smith. Throw to the front pylon, not caught, not feet didn't get down for T. Higgins. One foot, and then the second foot comes out of bounds, if you remember correctly. Not much for Stone here. He's on Irv Smith in the slot. That'll take us to second down. Stone back in his position. Same spot. We have a tight end and Jamar on the side now bringing Boyd. Looks like man coverage. We got a screen. All right, Geno Stone, you got to make a play here. First down. Did he get that? No, he's going to be short. Stone doesn't. Doesn't get involved here as he kind of leisurely runs towards the action. Third and three. Let's see what the Ravens dial up here from the 12 yard line. Geno Stone, safety closest to us. Are they going to let Hamilton cover Jamar Chase in the slot there and Stone rotate to the middle of the field? Yes. And we've got an out route to Chase for the first down so good read pre-snap from joe burrow to see what it looked like with them leaning and where they were going and picked his spot as geno stone goes to the free safety spot the first down from the four geno stone closest to us and we got to run up the middle doesn't get involved so we'll keep it moving the thing about safety play when you watch it they're out there every play, so we don't have to skip plays where he's not out there. And he doesn't have to get involved in every single play. Now we've got Chase and Boyd to Geno Stone's side here as he's over the top. Let's see if he helps. Yes, he's helping with. That's right. I remember this play. 
This was laid beautifully. Boyd should have had a touchdown here as Geno Stone helps double team Jamar Chase. And Boyd can't bring it in. Third down. Bengals down by 10. Starting to feel the pressure. Geno Stone again, same spot. Let's see what he's looking at here. Good touchdown, T. Higgins. We've seen that one on Marlon Humphrey. I remember that play. That was a fun play. Nothing for Geno Stone there. We'll keep it moving. We should be into the fourth quarter now. He's the fire safety on the other side. That is not Kyle Hamilton across from him. Hamilton is in the slot. Nothing for Stone. Same spot. Sun's coming out. It looks like he's getting on the slot receiver here. He is over the middle. Picks up. Picks up Tyler Boyd as Jonah Williams loses to Jadavion Clowney. I'm going to watch that. Jonah Williams signed with the Arizona Cardinals. Did not make a mention of that earlier. It is a two-year, $30 million deal. $15 million per year, which is the going rate for a quality starting tackle in the league. Which is why it's hard to pay for them. Especially in free agency. Man coverage with Boyd. Oh, that's right. Irv. If you, Irv can break this tackle, man, I get all frustrated all over again. How far does Irv go? He could have had a huge game. This could have cemented his season. He could be still with, be with the Bengals if he stayed on his feet there. Probably not, but I mean, we do get Geno Stone in man coverage. Oh, I thought he was. I might have been looking at the wrong guy. So we got Stone right here. I may have been looking at 29 there. Let's watch Stone. Yeah, he's blitzing. There we go. Gets chipped just a bit. Ted Karras taking on two guys. I remember we highlighted this play, right? Do you remember that? Because he's got Queen with one arm, Stone with the other. Gives Burrow just enough time to get that ball off, which should have been a huge gain. Can Mike Gusecki turn that into a huge gain? He also gets tripped up a whole bunch. So that'll be interesting. Stone's the deep free safety here as we check it down to Mixon. Nothing to see. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this game. Nice route by Tyler Boyd on Marlon Humphrey. Pushes into him, leans into him, breaks out at the sticks. Geno Stone over the top. Helps come up and make the tackle. Stone in the same spot again. Jumping up this time. If they wanted to throw that out route to Chase, he would have been right there for it. Undercutting another route again. Stone top left. Let's see. Nope. Too much pressure, Burrow's got to get rid of it. Bengals down by 10. You can do some fun things. Geno Stone is at the free safety spot. Clear loan free safety here. Let's see if it holds. If they stay there, yep. Oh, he's rotating all the way over on top of Irv. Dang. What was that? What was that rotation? I see. So it was a complete rotation for cover two. Stone's going to start in the middle of the field. And he's going to end up over here over top, while the corner on this side is going to be the cover two corner on that side. Burrow sees it, which is why he throws this ball to Chase, because a lot of times you'll have a zone. Let me use different colors here. You'll have a zone here and a zone here, so you can hit this small spot right there, and that's what it looks like Burrow tries to do on this play. So not so much a... Yeah, he's he's definitely behind the he looks to the right first, gets confused by this coverage. Like, whoa, well, can't do that. Let me get rid of it. But I know Chase should be out there somewhere. He thinks so quickly when he's on top of it. Juno Stone, the free safety again. Let's 
Looks like they're sending a blitz. He's rotating all the way over to the other side. And Higgins takes the slant and a tight window. Picks up the first down. Bengals keep it moving. Stay within the game. They still have a chance. Let me go back real quick. Clock is taking Juno Stone. Rotating to the deep free safety spot. And ball is slow and late. And knocked away. You start sitting on these routes when you're not going to try and test these guys deep. Six thirty left now. Gino Stone still up here. You can make a cut up of me saying that every play. And again, he kind of comes in there, but he doesn't really want to tackle, right? He's like, "Yeah, whatever. We'll let you get." What am I going to break my neck for an extra? Stop you for an extra yard? It's going to be third and four, regardless. Now we'll call our play. Now we'll pull out what we need to do. He's right over top of Irv Smith here. Let's see if he's covering that. He is not. It's more like a cover two situation flowing with the play. And it's the same play, same concept we had earlier, right? We're going to end up with a shorter out route, medium out route, and a deep guy trying to split two defenders. And that ball does not go where it needs to go. Does not reach it, reach its intended destination. Does Burrow get here? Is that what happens? Yeah, that's right. So he was trying for that deep shot. I remember now. You know, Stone back in his normal position. We got three receivers to the right. He's eyes on Chase, then eyes back to the middle on Irv Smith. Burrow works through his full progression and gets to Tyler Boyd, keeps this game alive. Stone at the deep free safety spot, mostly leaning right at the hash. We'll see if that, yep, it's going to be a cover two. And he hits Higgins over the middle. It's either going to be the middle linebacker or the safeties that make the tackle on these plays. And on this one, and Roquan covers a lot of ground. You know, I'd like to see Gino get in there and make a make a hit, a stronger tackle. Five minutes left now. Bengals down by seven. Gino Stone, far safety. Two burrows left. Run up the middle. Nothing for Stone here. We'll keep it moving. They say he was targeted, I want to say, five times in this game. He's right over top of Jamar Chase in the slot here. Is he going to stay with him? He is. That's right, Irv. Man, they were throwing to Irv early in the year. They thought he was going to do something, didn't they? They went from throwing to Irv to completely pretty much benching him, making him inactive every game. Not inactive. He was still out there. You just remember, like, Hudson was playing over him. Wilcox was playing over him at times. All right, focus on Geno Stone. We're getting close to the end of the game here. Nothing there for him. This is where Burrow gets re-injured. Stone just staying with the play. Watch him. He's on the left side. So we're going to break this down just a little bit here as Burrow scrambles around. Stone's going to have to do a lot and actually earn his paycheck for the day. Not, you know, I'm not trying to be rude about it. I mean, so he jumps in on the slant. Because, okay, what's Burrow doing? Burrow, you, you see how he checks real fast on the backside guy? He's like, okay, eyes back on Burrow. What's happening here? Let me ro roll with him. And we've got Chase behind him. So he's in the good. He's in a good window in the path of the quarterback. I almost don't remember how this finishes up now. All right, Geno Stone. Do we see him right? Everyone's on it. It's like in the, in the red zone, they like him to play the middle of the field. Nothing there. There's a quick out route to the front pylon like they did against the Steelers week one, 2022. Now, Geno Stone's lined up directly over top of Irv Smith Jr. I think that's Geno Stone. Looks like him. He's got the black arm sleeve on his left elbow. Irv just runs directly into him. T with the touchdown. 
Let's see if we can watch Irv again. Irv versus Geno Stone. Two guys no longer playing for their teams. They just swapped teams. Not really. Geno Stone did. And Irv went to the Chiefs. I don't know why I said that. Touchdown Bengals. Put some points up on the board. All right. That was it. Let's review. So that was considered his best game of the season by PFF. He also had a really high scoring game against Tennessee. I watched that. Very similar type of performance without the interception. Uh, I think this game mostly, if you're wondering about the grades, I think it's mostly hinged on that interception. It was a great, great play. There were some good coverage plays where he wasn't targeted, but the plays he was targeted, he didn't affect the ball. You know, Tyler Boyd had that one over the middle. That was a nice catch. I thought at times he was a little passive coming up to play the run and tackle guys after the catch. So that reflects, I think, what his overall profile says about him, which is why I think he's a good player, but not a great player at this point in his career. He's still young. He's not even 25 yet. As of right now, he's not even 25. He'll turn 25 very soon. I think it's a good player. I think it's a good addition to the to the team that didn't have a true free safety, and now they brought in Vaughn Bell as well. So we'll see how the four guys, and they like Tyson Anderson, and we, if we could ever see him play, and he's been at least on special teams very, very good for them last year. So um, we'll see what that, what that looks like. The only guy I would be 100% certain that has a starting job is this Geno Stone right here. The other guys, we may have to figure it out. It may be a competition. It may be Battle versus Von Bell. It may be Battle, Bell, and Dax at the strong safety spot. I expect Dax to play more corner. We've said that, but yeah, I think uh, safety one is Geno Stone, and we'll see how it goes. It's more more bodies, more experience, definitely in, in that room than they had last year, so that's a good thing. And a free safety, which they didn't have at all. They tried to make Nick Scott that. That didn't work, so an upgrade. We'll move on next time to Sheldon Rankins, maybe a little bit of Mike Gusecki and Zach Moss. I might save Gusecki and Moss for one video because I think they are uh, – It's you gotta you can't just watch the film because they're not playing every snap, right? So I, I'll cut it down and have that ready for you guys probably uh, next week at some point. But this has been Bengals on the Brain, Episode 67, presented by First Star Logistics. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. Until next time, good day. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.